everybody welcome back to the shop uh, gonna go through a couple of things in this make more progress on the panel a little bit of an oops with uh, a short that happened that caused a lot of smoke and melted wires nothing too serious and uh, just kind of updates on how I'm making progress on the various pieces I'm putting in if you enjoy it uh, give it a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe cheers thanks everyone bye now and uh, back at it You'll see here, I've got uh, more and more of it done. I've also got a switch here now wired up that's temporary to my backup battery. You'll see I've got some of my wiring started. Here's my grounds for all of my switches, uh, starting to put in some of the various pieces. I've got my CAN bus connected in here. So I gotta clean it up a bit still. And it's terminated just so I can test it out. I've got my vertical power in here, though that's not running yet. And I'll explain that in a minute. But uh, you can see slowly but surely making progress. And in here, this is a CAN bus connector, but that would go to my G5, which I don't have yet, but uh, it's already wired in. So the whole CAN bus, and I'm trying to figure out a loop here and you know, bundling some of my grounds, just kind of cleaning it up. And one of the things that I typically do is I test this out. So right now it'll run off the back backup battery. If I flip the switch on, which is this would be my normally my backup battery, it'll all power up and it'll work fine. So then I thought, okay, well, I'm moving it around. So I figured I'd go and rewire up my vertical power. So I started to do that. My power going down to a battery that I have below. And then I wire in this switch here as kind of my temporary master switch that's connected to a relay that is right here. Well, one of the things you want to make sure you don't do is you see this connector. When I had it set up in a bench before, there was no connection to this chassis. And so if you're not extremely careful, what will happen is it'll short out. And if that happens, you end up with this. So this is the power and ground wires that were connected to this temporary battery here. There's the ash from it, uh, smoked out of my whole workshop. The whole house was filled of toxic smoke. This is uh, just uh, household wiring. I just had it temporarily put in there just to connect the battery up temporary like I have here now. Um, and as of course, as this is happening, I'm watching this thing started to glow as it's starting to melt the wire down, can't find the wire cutters, can't do the break. So now you'll notice I've put a little connector in here just so I can shut it off. Because the other thing, and I'm gonna have to do some research on this is, I had the master switch wired, flipped it on, immediately realized I had a problem, flipped the switch off, thought I was done with it, but the relay didn't shut off. The relay stayed on. And um, when I was rewiring this back up, I realized that if you don't have, and I was curious because I had it in there before, but if you don't have this relay grounded, I think you can have some strange behavior. Um, it's only a three connector relay. And so what happened was um, it just wouldn't shut off. And so then what I did is as I was rewiring this back in, I wanted to change this wire and I noticed that even with the switch off, if I mucked with this wire, the relay would actually come on. And once it's on, it stays on. And that's exactly what happened with this short, is even though I had a switch in here to shut it off, um, once it had a path, it doesn't shut down. So anyway, just uh, a little tidbit there, but uh, the smoke was pretty bad. It's pretty toxic, obviously, why well, you don't want to be using those wires in, uh, in your plane. And of course that battery will, you know, I think it'll crank out up to probably 600 amps. So uh, yeah, it was not a lot of fun. It took a couple hours to clear the smoke, but now I got it all wired up again. And uh, if I come over here, you'll see, nah, I won't power that on, but um, this master switch here is not connected 
to the relay because I didn't want to run the wire. I'll have to just chop it up anyway. It's just a temporary switch on the back. But now it is wired such that if I flip the switch on, if the vertical power's on, so if I flip my temporary relay on, you can hear that click as it clicked in. And I come around here, you'll see now I've got it wired so that I can actually see that my bus is on. And that's being fed from here. So I have that join in there. But uh, yeah, slowly but surely getting there, making progress. And I think uh, the next thing on my list is starting to see about how I'm going to attach my radio and uh, see if I can't get that hammered out. If I get that hammered out, I'll be in uh, pretty good shape. And, uh, you know, then once I get the wires in here a little more, I'll start thinking about where I'm going to put my, my uh, Adele clamps to kind of clamp that up out of the way. But uh, I really like having it like this so I can wire it up on the bench. And then when I'm done, I'll leave all the wiring in here, just take the avionics out and just connect it up later. Hope you find it helpful. Bye now. Trying to figure out how to mount um, my GMA 245. Uh, you'll notice the slots cut out, cleaned that up, got rid of that bar so that's no longer in the way. Originally I thought about doing something like this, um, just kind of mocking it up. And then I went from that to going to the local hardware store to try this out. This was a piece of uh, angle aluminum and I cut it Got it roughly the distance between each one of these <clears throat> ribs. I guess, call them ribs. Um, this material's too soft though, so it really doesn't hold the weight. Um, so it flexes pretty easy. So I think now that I've done this, <clears throat> I've got two options. You'll notice here I kind of made these uh, brackets that will ultimately bolt on now they're not tall enough i don't think because i can't get both screws in here but uh, i made those brackets so that i can just kind of attach it here and then these would run across and give it the support one in the front and one in the back and you'll notice it's on an angle that's because this is actually on a four and a half degree angle when it's ultimately cut so i got two options one option is um try this with something a little stronger. Um, I actually have some angle aluminum around that I may just use uh, and try it with something like this and uh, run it that way up, just notch it so I can bend the sides down. So something like that, or I can order a piece of aluminum and put a whole strip across here and maybe just to cut some holes in it to lighten it, but um, I don't know, got to try and see how that works out. And I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with my, uh, GTR 20, my remote radio, which I had planned to put in the back of the plane, but I like the idea of just getting it in here and getting it wired up. So I may think about putting that in here as well, though I have most of the cabling made up, but well, I'm going to think about it anyway. Bye now. Okay, prototype number two. Took some angle, cut them so I could bend them down over the sides, um, pull that flush to the front here, put two brackets on here. I've got them just pop riveted on here for the moment. And I got this cleat coat in, but you can see the slide and you can adjust it. Once I wanna tweak it <clears throat> like that, so it's pretty close. I think, you know, if I did it this way, that would work. You now, unfortunately, because the angle, you get stress cracks where I bent it. So what I'll probably do is uh, get a piece of aluminum and uh, just a strip, maybe something a little heavier, and just cut it the width of this gap here, bend it down. So that'll be my foundation, rivet that on each side, and uh, then I can put these brackets on here and it'll bolt to those brackets. But I think that should work out, uh, should work out pretty good. It's a, it's a snug fit, but I think it looks good. And unfortunately, because of the way I've mounted it here, I don't wanna make it permanent. 
I don't want to run the radio in here, so I won't be doing that. But I can at least take the this piece. So the way this works, it actually goes on the back of the unit, and uh, you screw that onto the back of the unit. Your connectors actually screw onto the back of this, and there's a there's an Allen key right in the front of the radio face where you twist it and it screws into this thing so it pulls it in snug. Um, that way you just unscrew the radio and you can just move it out. That should do it. Bye. I've uh, put the nut plates on here. So as you can see, I've got a screw in the side. Now these are not the final screws. They're too long and I'll end up going with a black screw and maybe a little smaller head. You can see it's a little big. But uh, you get the idea here. And what I ended up doing is I actually had some rivets uh, from before. So I didn't use the recommendation from uh, Aerosport products. Uh, not totally anyway. So what I ended up using was these. These are uh, CCC 32 cherry rivets that I purchased from Aircraft Spruce. I got those because I had an issue around the baggage door. And uh, they go in pretty good, and it's pretty nice. It should work out really well. As you can see here, it's, uh, you know, it'll go pretty flush. I countersunk those a little tiny bit just to make them snug, but, you know, overall, I think it worked, uh, it worked really well. So that may be uh, a good option in case you run into the same challenge. Up to you, uh, but it seems to be working for me. And the worst case is, you know, maybe they get loose later. If they do, I can always drill them out and uh, put in different rivets. But for now, what's nice about them is they fit into the 40 holes. They fit nicely into the uh, nut plates. So you don't have to drill anything out and they seem to be really secure. The center console piece now I've started putting together. Uh, you get an idea of what it's gonna look like and like that. Um, I decided to put the lights down here, at least for the moment. So I'll have my nav, position, landing, strobe, and I think I'm going to have my uh, my defrost down here as well. You know, this, this piece here, this metal is, you know, just a trial piece, but I thought it'd be good to just kind of get it, template it all out, see how it works, and it'll help me run my wires. When I cut out the carbon fiber, I actually cut it out slightly smaller than, <clears throat> uh, or certainly slightly larger than it actually had outlined because I didn't need to cut all this material off the top and I wanted it to be nice and secure. When I do the final layout, I might have to trim it back a little bit, but so far it works, uh, it works pretty good. And again, you know, I use my Dremel tool to cut it. It worked really well. The, uh, the autopilot head, this is just held in place by, uh, you can see this here. There's a little metal awl, owl that uh, that comes out here. It just grabs onto the metal, so that seems to work pretty good. And you just tighten it down, so you don't need any special mounting for it. So the only thing I'll need the mounting for is the uh, is the nav. And then of course I just mark this out, centered it, cut it out of the aluminum. And uh, when I get this done. I'll actually have this all punched. So I cut this one out manually, which worked out okay. Uh, but I'll end up getting it punched so the hole's the right size. I might have to trim it down a little bit, but uh, you know, leave it a little tight and that way you don't have to worry about the space. But overall, I think, uh, I think this is uh, starting to look pretty good. Oh, and in previous video, I showed that I use this, these pull rivets. This is what it looks like in here. And when you mount it on, actually these are pretty flush. It's not too bad. There's a couple here that have a little ridge to them, but again, given the gap, it's not a problem, at least so far. Like I said, if it does become an issue, I can deal with it later. As you can see here, I've been cleaning up some things. This is a CAN bus connector for the next device. So I just had to leave that there. I'm probably gonna have a junction in my CAN bus so that I can connect and disconnect it from the wings, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, some quick things. I put my battery backup switch over here, so that's all wired up now. Making some progress on the cleanup of the wiring in the back. 
So you'll notice here, I changed this out. By default, this comes with a plastic connector. I really like the Garmin ones. So for a few extra bucks, I figured I'd put in a Garmin one. It's got a strain relief, but uh, you can kind of get an idea of how things are gonna work, okay? And now, <clears throat> the way it's configured, flip on the battery backup. When that comes on, my GDU comes on. You'll also see my GAD and my uh, GEA both come on. So I can see that coming up here. We'll give it a minute. Okay. And in here, you can see I've got some warnings. The one here, I got a bus failure. So that's what I expected because there's no main power. And if I click here and go to my displays, I can see my voltage on my backup battery. Okay. Now that it's all up and running, and you'll also, in a minute here, I'll get a message that says uh, no serial data from my uh, VPX. But now that I've got that done, flip on my master switch. So my battery backup. My master is now on. Oh, actually, hang on a second. I need to, uh, I need to enable it. Battery backup on. When that happens, it's now switched over. All the display, I now have my VPX data. You can see the new additional draw, and that's because it's now charging up any battery levels it needs to for my backup battery. And you can see here, it's gonna draw four amps. It'll only do that for a few seconds because it's not run down very much. <clears throat> now that I have that, that's all working. Next thing I can do here is I can go put on my avionics master switch. And when I do that, what you're gonna see is if I had it, my GTN, my GTR, all of those would be enabled. You'll see the little arrows in here pop up. So it's now all enabled. It also enabled my autopilot, but my autopilot is not on yet, but it allows power to it. Click that on. And now you can see my GMC 507 has started up and uh, now it's uh, fully operational. So if I adjust this, it'll adjust the heading. This will set my altitude. Um, I don't have any servos or anything on it yet, so it doesn't do too much besides that. And I don't have my Adahars, so it won't do anything besides that. But uh, yeah, I think it came out pretty good. And I think the next thing I'm gonna do here is work on this bracket. The original panel that was supposed to go in here, I think is stiff enough aluminum. I think I'll try and fabricate it out of that, maybe bend it up a little tiny bit just to give it, make it a little more rigid. And uh, you can see here, I also cut out the slot for my lights. So these are gonna be my, all of my lights. And then the one extra one in here will probably be my defrost. And then I've gotta figure out, I've gotta put my flap switch here. Obviously the 650 goes in this slot. And I haven't wired any of this up yet. Still haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that for my magnetos. But there you go. And you can kind of get an idea of how the wiring is gonna run back here as I get it laid out. Um, I'm probably gonna put some, you know, some connectors on the side here to hold these bundles together, keep them off the wall, but uh, you'll get the idea. And of course, I use my label printers to print all the labels. This is just how I'm doing it. Maybe you'll find it useful, maybe you won't. But anyway, cheers, bye now.